Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Welcome to Set Free with Ken Legg. This week we're dealing with the sensitive issue of sexual abuse. If there are young children listening, now might be a good time to consider whether this content will be appropriate. Laws that protect children use the word harm to describe the consequences of abuse on children. One piece of legislation defines harm as, quote, any detrimental effect of a significant nature on a child's physical, psychological or emotional well-being. This makes it immaterial how the harm to a child is caused. Obviously, it would include harm that is the result of physical abuse, verbal abuse, emotional abuse and sexual abuse. The facts are that by the time the children of our generation reach their late teens, they are more damaged than children of any previous generation. Now this presents an immense drain upon child welfare resources and at the same time a great challenge to the church. Jesus announced his mission as included bringing healing to the brokenhearted. The church now has that mandate. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. And we're looking at the subject of recovery from sexual abuse this week. And we're going to wrap it up today. Welcome, Ken. Now, I agree this whole subject of sexual abuse uh, presents a great challenge to the church. After all, we are Christ's hands stretched out to the world. And I think it's fair to say that the church generally is playing its part in ministering to victims of sexual abuse. Now, there are some specific ministries that are geared for this. There are helpful books and DVDs and, and other things. And then, of course, uh, in its daily ministry, you know, many local churches are just quietly getting on with the business of, of helping people to recover from abuse of all sorts in their past, including this. So let's go back to some of the things that you've been sharing with us this week, just as a bit of a recap. Yeah. Uh, first of all, the best thing we've said that a person could do for someone who has been abused is just to listen to them. They've been carrying this uh, pain, uh, this shame. It's been suppressed over a number of years and they've been waiting for the right time and the right person to share that with. They've been waiting to feel safe to be able to share that. And so don't jump in and try to be a counsellor to them and, yeah. uh, you know, sort them out, fix them, that sort of thing. Just listen to them. And, and that's a, a trust situation too. It's so important to maintain absolute confidentiality and trust yeah. because that person is opening, them, opening themselves, they're passed up to you. And then the next thing we said is, uh, you know, we touched upon this whole thing of forgiveness. There's a, there's a, a tension there, a balance, if you like, between the fact that we do need to forgive mm. in order to be released from the past. Otherwise, we'll be kept a hostage to that past event. But at the same time, um, we do have a duty of care to, to others. And so if the perpetrator is still out there and uh, in, in a place making other people vulnerable, then we do have a duty of care to notify the appropriate authorities, you know. Mm. And sometimes that can be very difficult, I would imagine. You talked also about the whole issue of identity. Let's unpack that a little bit. Yeah. Um, you remember we said that uh, it's important to differentiate between what's happened to me in the past and who I am today. Yeah. Because some people can fall into the trap of building their identity around past abuse. And, and when they do that, they actually allow the abuser to still carry on impacting their lives. And so you're talking here the difference between somebody who says, I'm an abused person, as yeah. opposed to, I'm a person who has experienced abuse. In the past, exactly right. And uh, so we're not abused persons, we are redeemed persons. Yeah. The truth about me is what Christ has done for me and what God says about me. That's what's going to give me quality of life and value in this life, in this present time. Another thing that people who've suffered abuse often have to deal with is that weight of shame that can often sit on them and really hold them down. Yeah, we've talked a lot about that, uh, Phil, this week because shame is a very important feature in this whole subject of sexual abuse. And uh, the thing about shame is that it sends a wrong message uh, to the victim of abuse. Uh, shame actually strikes at our identity. Now, there's a big difference between guilt and shame. You know, we feel guilty for what we do, mm. but we feel shame for who we are. Uh, guilt says there's something wrong with my behavior, but shame says there's something wrong with me. Guilt says I made a mistake. Shame says I am a mistake. Mm. Uh, and salvation takes us from shame and nakedness and covers us with the glory of God. And this, in turn, transforms the way that we view our body. So, so it's important to, as you say, get a hold of that whole truth about the fact that we are not people of shame but people of glory. Well, it's tied very closely into the, the whole identity thing. Yeah. If you're saying, I am a mistake, well, then you haven't actually realized that I am actually redeemed. Yeah. You know, I've got my identity in 
the shame. I've got my identity in what happened to me, that I am an abused person. Yeah. But actually, no, I'm not. I'm a child of God who in my past has suffered some abuse. Yeah. But God has redeemed me. That's right. And we're not a mistake at all. We're something that has been wonderfully planned from eternity. Mm. Satan has come along and, and through his malice and evil, he's used people to try to sideline us yep. and get us off that purpose that God has for us and send this message of shame to us uh, by what has happened to us, by what people have done to us. But that's not the truth about us. Mm. That's probably the truth about them. Mm. All that's shown is what's in their heart and what's in their life and stuff that they haven't dealt with. And it's come out in this awful way that has damaged us maybe through the abuse that we've received. But that's not the truth about us. In order to know the truth about us, we've got to go to the cross. Yeah. Uh, and that's where you know God has made a, a message that is indelible. It, it will never be erased. It will never be rubbed out. It will never be eliminated. You know, we can't take out the cross. It's a fact of history and it's changed our lives and it's changed our world. And as we looked at yesterday, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He indwells us. Yeah, and this is where we come into the present. The truth about us now is look at me now. I'm <laughs> carrying the glory of God around with Just me. Just look at know? me now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, in Christ, look at me now. I mean, uh, I'm, 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 I'm a partaker of the glory of God. I'm a partaker of the divine nature. God's got a program for my life that he's working through right at this very moment by which I am being conformed to the image of God and the reason for that is that others might see something of the glory of God shining forth mm. from me. So what he did at creation, uh, uh, recreation or regeneration was so real and so powerful that it's starting to work its way through into the surface of our lives so that other people can see these shafts of glory, these glimpses of glory, these wonderful revelations of God being manifest in us. If we could wrap the week up, Ken, I'm going to throw you a question without notice, and it's a curly one. There may be people listening thinking, these guys on a Christian radio station have no right in my mind to be talking about dealing with sexual abuse when yeah. the church itself has a bad rap. Yeah. What would you say to them? Look, that is so true. Um, and, and, and unfortunately, the church always gets the headlines for the wrong reasons. You know, and I know, feel that the church does a whole lot of good and, and you know, is carrying on a whole lot of relief work and uh, missions work and going to the poor and so on. Those things don't get much of a mention. On your, your program, they do. On your, on your radio station, they do. But uh, in, in the world, we never get a mention for those things. But the moment the church uh, puts a foot wrong, and, and as you say, there's a, there, there is guilt in this area mm. um, that has to be addressed and has to be cleaned up. Uh, but that's, they're the sort of things that make the headlines. And um, all I can say is on behalf of the church, if we can speak on behalf of the church, is um, that's not what we're about. That is not what Jesus has called the church into being for. Mm. Um, you know, even Jesus had his Judas, um, his imposter, his uh, intruder, if you like, into the team that wasn't really there for what it was all about. And so we're going to get this all the way through life. But let's keep the main thing, the main thing. And Phil, I would like to say this, if I can, and I'll put this to you, uh, today, I think it would be good if we finish this week on, on a word of prayer yeah, for that. Um, those that are listening that have been hurt and uh, damaged in the past in this way. There's some of the things that we've shared and some of the things that haven't yet been said that uh, they will hear about elements of truth concerning the truth about them, their mm. true identity, will come through. So let's pray yeah. for our listening audience today. Our Father, we thank you for your wonderful love and your work of redemption. We thank you that you look upon us, Lord God, and you feel the pain that we feel. Your word says that you suffer with those who suffer. You grieve with those who grieve. You weep with those who weep. And we thank you, Lord God, that one day sin will be totally eradicated from this planet and Jesus will reign over the nations. But until then, we do thank you for the wonderful comfort of the Holy Spirit who is able to work into our lives the effects of the victory of the cross. And I just pray for any of our listeners today who have been damaged in the past because of sexual abuse or any kind of abuse, that today they will know the truth, the truth about them, and that that truth will set them free. We ask this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that brings us to the end of our series this week. Hope you can join us next week when we start a brand new one. Until then, remember, you don't have to carry that baggage. God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg, including the book What's Eating You, which features topics from today's message, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision.org.au.